Welcome to Weekly Wisdom from Jubilee Circle. We teach the common wisdom of love and unity that is found in all mainstream religions, metaphysical teachings, mysticism, and inspired secular and religious writers and teachers throughout the ages. Our goal is to help you connect with your higher divine self and transform from the inside out so you can become a force for love and transformation in the world. Each week we bring you wisdom from our founding spiritual director, Reverend Candace Shalhoub, and other guest speakers. We hope you enjoy this week's words of wisdom. I'm sure you're all familiar with the old saying, I'll believe it when I see it. Right? That's how we live. I, when I see it, yeah, I'll believe it. But in the metaphysical spiritual world, that saying gets turned on its head. It really is, I'll see it when I believe it. Currently, we believe that we are walking in the fields of barley, which is the bodily world of the ego. In reality, though, with a capital R, we are walking, we are always existing in fields of gold, the realm of of the holy, that field of unity that we have never left. And if you can believe that, then you can begin to see it. You will begin to perceive that field of gold, that spiritual plane of oneness where we all exist with God and with each other as one spirit. So how do we begin to believe that so we can see it? Well, we do it by being willing to see things differently, by leaving our own little private Idaho, which is that separate ego world we all create, by realizing that this material world that we see is really formed out of absolutely nothing. The mystics have taught that nothingness is at the root of our existence. They have taught this for centuries. But today we're going to explore how the scientists are actually catching up with them. Proving that everything we see, everything we think we perceive, is composed of one invisible, omnipotent energy. Some call it God. Some call it the force. Some call it the flying spaghetti monster. But it's all the same. It's one field of energy. And when we can finally believe in that field of gold, then we will step out of these fields of barley and we'll see it all around us in every moment. And all we'll know how to, what to say is when we see it, what we'll say is, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Here are these wise and holy words. A Course in Miracles, chapter 13. We have said that you have but two emotions, love and fear. One is changeless but continually exchanged, being offered by the eternal to the eternal. In this exchange, it is extended, for it increases as it is given. The other has many forms, for the content of individual delusions differs greatly. But they have one thing in common. They are all insane. They are made of sights which are not seen and sounds which are not heard. They make up a private world which cannot be shared, for they are meaningful only to their maker, and so they have no meaning at all. In this world, their maker moves alone, for only he perceives them. Each one peoples his world with figures from his individual past, and it is because of this that private worlds do differ. But the figures that he sees were never real, for they were only made up of his reactions to his brothers and sisters, and do not include their reactions to him. Therefore, he does not see that he has made them, and that they are not whole. For these figures have no witnesses, being perceived in one separate mind only. It is through these strange and shadowy figures that the insane relate to their insane world. For they see only those who remind them of these images, and it is to them that they relate. Thus do they communicate with those who are not there. And it is they who answer. And no one hears their answer save him who called upon them, and he alone believes they answered him. Projection makes perception, and you cannot see beyond it. From Ernest Holmes in his book, Science of Mind. Never limit your view of life by any past experience. The possibility of life is inherent within the capacity to imagine what life is, backed by the power to produce this imagery or divine imagination. It is not a question of failing or succeeding. It is simply a question of sticking to an idea until it becomes a tangible reality. The illusion is the way we look at things. We have looked at poverty 
degradation, and misery until they have assumed gigantic proportions. Now we must look at harmony, happiness, plenty, prosperity, peace, and right action until they appear. And from the Sufi mystic poem Rumi, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I will meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Everybody breathe deeply. <sighs> all right. You've all been given a kaleidoscope this morning, and I want you to take some time right now to look through your kaleidoscope. Jim, if you're on, if you're on the, the YouTube, Jim's going to show you your own personal kaleidoscope. So I invite everybody to turn the, turn the end. The end will turn. And you can look, you put it up to the light. You can see all the different shapes. Okay, everybody got a good look at their kaleidoscope? Okay, I want you to put your hand over the end of it. Not so pretty now, isn't it? Not so much fun. All that darkness. Yeah, yeah. Now move your hand back. Okay, now, now you got some light. Look at that. All right, I'd like you to lay your kaleidoscopes down, turn your attention to the room. Congratulations, you've just awakened. Look at y'all. You're all awake now. Within the world of the kaleidoscope, you have limited yourself to seeing what is right in front of you. The kaleidoscope is the narrow view of the world that we all have because that is the narrow view of the ego. We're in fields of gold and we're walking around in a field of barley thinking that this is it. This is why, oh, look at my world. Look, oh, crap. Oh, now my world is dark. Oh, now I'm depressed. Oh, my God. Oh, my. oh the light's back. Yay. Oh, I'm happy. Now I'm not. Oh, I'm happy. No. It's your ego right here. And this is the narrow field that 99.9% .9 of our time we spend looking through. Right? But if we're willing to draw our attention away from the kaleidoscope, here's your ego. Here you are. If you go, oh, oh, there's a big old world out here. And all I was doing was, oh, that's a pretty world. But this one, look at this one. Oh, my goodness. This narrow view of existence, it's not the truth. It's just your perception. And it's an illusion. We create this egoic kaleidoscope world through projection. Our reading from A Course in Miracles says projection makes perception. And you can't see beyond it. Because you're looking here. You're not looking here. But what are we projecting in the world? Most often we're projecting our fear and our guilt. Which means we're constantly attacking the world and defending ourselves from what we perceive as attacks on us. But the good news is we have two fear or love, so we can choose which one we're projecting. But we're afraid of love because we have been taught that love is weak. We believe that if we just love everybody, oh, I'm just going to love everybody, and then you become a doormat. Everybody takes advantage of you because I'm just loving everybody. And that's the kind of love the ego wants you to think you're accepting when you step onto a spiritual path. But that's just the ego's way of keeping you Staring into the kaleidoscope of sometimes I'm happy, woo, sometimes I'm sad, sometimes I'm happy. Happy, happy sad, happy. <laughs> that's what we do. Love, the only thing that's real, is stronger than any hatred. It's stronger than any anger. It's stronger than any fear. It is not the opposite of fear. Love has no opposite. It's the only reality that is. It makes up the field where we truly exist while we're dreaming about these images within our kaleidoscope. Now, this may all sound like New Age spiritual mumbo-jumbo, but science is catching up with the mystics. Rumi knew about this field when he said, out beyond this right doing and wrong doing is a field. And he didn't know a darn thing about quantum physics, but he'd been there. He saw it. He knew about it. He wrote poems about it. 
He and other ancient mystics before him realized this world is an illusion. It is made up of nothing but energy, an omnipotent energy that constantly shifts and changes form. And then it shifts again and brings up form and it disappears. And it's just, it does this all the time. The field is made up of an unconscious force, what Mayor Baba calls beyond, beyond God. The quantum physicists have finally discovered this field. They know where it is. It exists. They've seen it. This is a field where atoms and quarks and protons and neutrons, they all pop into existence and then they disappear again. And sometimes they organize themselves and they become music stands and microphone stands and chairs and people. They just come up, organize, live a little while, go back to nothing. It's an omnipresent field of energy. It is always around us, but we're too busy looking here. Oh, that's my life. There it is right there. This is the illusion jubilance. We make up our private worlds, according to a course, and we people them with shadowy figures from our past. And then we use these insane experiences from our past to relate to an insane world, and we create insanity, a future of insanity. For they see only those who remind them of these images, a course says, and it is to them that they relate. They do not communicate Thus do they communicate with those who are not there, and it is they who answer. And no one hears their answer, save him who called upon them, and he alone believes they answered him. These are the stories you tell yourself in your head. These are the conversations you hold after you walk away from somebody, right? I wish I'd said this. Man, I could have said that. Woo, what if I'd done? This is, hello, you're in your kaleidoscope. <laughs> you're making up your world. It's right there. Ah. Projection makes perception. And you cannot see beyond it. So let's test this out a little bit. Swap kaleidoscopes, please. If you have two, look at another one. Those might be the same over there. But if it's got a different thing, swap your kaleidoscope and look. Is it, you got something different? So they're a different, oh, look. Now you're in a different kaleidoscope. Oh, look at that. Yeah, right now you're seeing a different world. We have two emotions, right? Fear and love. We made one of them, fear. The other one, love, was given by the holy. Each is a way of seeing, a course says, and different worlds arise from their different visions. So when we swap kaleidoscopes, you know, sometimes we say, put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And so you try to see the world that, as they see it. It's still insane, right? Even when you step in somebody else's shoes, you're like, wow, this is their world, okay? <laughs> this is crazy. Well, we get tired of kaleidoscopes. We like to swap. I want to see a different view. But you know what? We're still asleep. We're still asleep in the field of unity. It's called... Swapping one illusion for the other. But I'll give you an example. I've said that before, that my, you know, my, my father's departure from our family when I was nine, that was a pivotal moment in life. And from that episode, my young self developed this coping mechanism of anger and cynicism. I had an ugly kaleidoscope. I mean, it was like, rah, rah, lots of reds, lots of... <laughs> so... Um, I allowed that nine-year-old to run my life until I was in my 30s. Saw everything through this lens of anger. I saw an angry world. It was a kaleidoscope of fear, but it was the only one I knew about. I didn't know there were other kaleidoscopes. And I felt like if I gave up this kaleidoscope, I might not get another one, or it could be worse. I don't know. I'm going to be. I'm going to have to sacrifice something if I if I switch because I built myself around this kaleidoscope. I built my whole life around this one. So what happens if I change kaleidoscopes? But we all do it. We all build ourselves around the shadowy figures of our private little Idaho. We build identities on our traumas, but also we build identities on the good things we perceive as happening to us in this tiny little world. 
We don't understand that there's a field of unity where we truly exist, much, much less that there may be better kaleidoscopes or illusions that we can tune into. We believe we're stuck with what we have. Now, after I went through some therapy and did a ritual of forgiveness for my then dead father, I realized there's another way to look at the world. This new perspective, this new perception, was a world that was friendlier. It was happier. It was more joyous. It brought less suffering for myself and those around me because I became more loving, less angry. I happily embraced this world. Woo! New kaleidoscope! It's great. But there was still suffering. There were still bouts of anger and depression and loneliness, even in this new, happier kaleidoscope. Oh, there was still some darkness. Now and then. And this is how you know you're swapping one illusion for another. There's still some ego lurking. But this is not a time for despair when you realize that because if we swap an unhappy illusion for a happier one, it means we're making progress on the spiritual path. If you want to judge your progress, are you in a happier place? Have you left behind what makes you unhappy? And we may never reach that place of true egoless enlightenment. We may never really be able to step back, put the kaleidoscope down and fully see that field of gold that we really live in. But swapping one for this, our perception has widened simply because we now know the field is real and the kaleidoscope is not. It's that emotion of fear that keeps us from denying the reality of a different, happier kaleidoscope, let alone embracing the reality of that ultimate field of unity. Fear tells us if we swap kaleidoscopes, if we seek a world of peace over anger, we'll be weakening ourselves. We, people will take advantage of us. My ego had convinced me, my anger and cynicism, this is the thing that keeps you safe. Dropping that in favor of love and joy and peace, it told me, it's going to make you weak. And I believed that for a long time. I caught glimpses of this new kaleidoscope. I found my way to a more loving and peaceful and joyful worldview. And oddly enough, this new kaleidoscope is pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful. It creates entire worlds. A happy dream, as a Course says. Ernest Holmes in his book Science of Mind says this is part of our path to expand our perception, swap kaleidoscopes, so we can create what a Course calls a happy dream. We have to stop limiting ourselves because of past experiences, those shadowy, unreal figures that populate our egoic kaleidoscopes. Instead, we're called to step into our divine imagination. And look at the world through that lens. He writes, we've looked at poverty, degradation, and misery until they have assumed gigantic proportions. Now we must look at harmony, happiness, plenty, prosperity, peace, and right action until they appear. This is not a Pollyanna-ish hope. This is the exact spiritual path that will lead to awakening. Because if projection does indeed make perception... Projecting love instead of fear will change the way we see this world and others. This is the power of our spiritual path, Jubilance. The moment, the moment I stopped projecting anger and cynicism onto the world, I stopped experiencing angry and cynical people. My world out here changed. The people in front of me became people who were peaceful, loving, joyful, happy people. I began to see those around me not as obstacles or people who were wrong, stupid, and annoying in need of my correction, but as God in the flesh offering me a chance to be blessed by them if I was willing to widen my perception enough to see their inherent innocence and inestimable worth, no matter what their behavior might be in this moment. So how do you begin the spiritual growth process? Well, you, get, you begin by allowing. Give yourself permission to see a different world. To expand your perception from your self-limiting kaleidoscope of the ego that keeps you seeking and not finding 
And then you can become a will willing to swap one illusion for another just to convince yourself it can be done. The only thing that will sacrifice, that you'll be sacrificing though, is this old illusion. These shadowy figures that you held in your limited imagination. All I sacrificed were the angry and cynical people in my world. Not much of a sacrifice, right? Then we step into awareness. We begin to question our old beliefs and limitations that we have used to cope with the world. And in this state, we become aware of new ways of thinking, new ways of seeing the world. We may find teachers at this state who help us. I found my uh, gateway guru, Wayne Dyer, and then that led on to like Eckhart Tolle and Marian Williamson, Course in Miracles. They helped me expand my perception from poverty, degradation, and misery to harmony, happiness, plenty, prosperity, peace, and right action. And guess what? When I chose to perceive love instead of fear, lovely and loving things and people appeared in my world. Look, you're all here. <laughs> Isn't that great? What a beautiful world I have created. I'm, yeah, thank you. I'm still insane. But welcome to my insanity. <laughs> We've said before, either this shit works or it doesn't, right? And the reason it works, jubilance, is not because of some Pollyanna-ish wishful thinking. It works because it's science. It's science! The quantum field of unity out beyond wrongdoing and right doing, it exists. The quantum physicists say so. It is the beyond, beyond God, the field of omnipresent divine consciousness from which things form out of nothingness. They exist in our perception for a while and then they return to the nothingness that created them. And jubilance, that is good news. Because that means if you're willing to put down the kaleidoscopes that show you a world of suffering and despair and peer through a new one that shows peace and joy and love, eventually you will put down all of your kaleidoscopes and you will awaken into the field of divine imagination that you have never left. That's good news. Happy birthday. <laughs> To everybody. And you may say, that is lovely preacher, but how do I use that when I walk out of the room and something comes up and challenges me? Okay, here's the way you do it. Stop judging. Quit it. Just stop judging everything that happens to you. It's not good. It's not bad. It just is. Love what is. And then get curious. Step one, don't judge. Step two, get curious. Everything going on in your kaleidoscope, in your dream world, is there for a reason. It's always trying to teach you something, a deepening of spirit to move you into the happy dream where God can gently bring you into awakening. So when the challenges arise, here are your tools for today. When your challenges arise, the question you ask, somebody's irritating you. Some, something, something comes up and all like that. Question number one, why is this in my dream? Why? Why is, it, why is it here? How is it trying to benefit me and widen my perception so I can create the happy dream that leads to awakening? Get curious. Why is this in my dream? As you ask, I promise your kaleidoscope, it will shift. And you may catch a glimpse of the field of unity. Out beyond right doing and wrong doing. This is how God moves us through each illusion as we choose by bringing more light into our heart until all we see is that field. Put down the kaleidoscopes and we awaken. This is meant to be a gentle process, jubilance. When a child is having a nightmare, it's not good to just shake them awake, right? They will awake in terror. Ah! <laughs> but if you gently hold a child, if you stroke their hair, you whisper to them to wake up, and then they awaken calmly in loving arms. And this is exactly how the Holy works with us. 
moving us from illusion to illusion, from dark illusions to those with more light until we gently awaken in that field, that field of unity, of energy out beyond wrongdoing and right doing. While we're looking through our kaleidoscopes, though, we're invited to realize everybody else is walking around with one, too. Let's see how that works. Stand up. Everybody stand up. Take your kaleidoscope. Take your kaleidoscope. Put your kaleidoscope up to your eye. Walk around. Don't take it down. Walk around. Walk around. Up. Right there. That's how wars start. Right there. Renee just bumped into John. She hit me first. This is war. Because we're all in our kaleidoscopes. But if we take our kaleidoscopes down, look at our field of unity. We're all here. We're all here. We can see one another. We can love one another. Nobody's bumping into each other. She hit me first. I have every right to go to war. <laughs> you see how it works. We're all walking around. This is where we get to choose to see differently. To be the one with the expanded perception. So when we bump into somebody with a totally different kaleidoscope, we can look past, she hit me first, <laughs> and see the innocence, the pure love, the unity between us. And this is our invitation, jubilance from the holy, to perceive the world outside of our own private Idaho and be willing to get out of that state in the name of love. We're called not just to awaken ourselves, but to be instruments of light and love and peace so the whole world so the whole world gets a chance to look up from their own little kaleidoscopes that are just showing them the fields of barley just long enough for them to see the field of unity, that field of gold where we all truly exist. Because once you see it, once you believe it and you see it, oh, you want to see it again and again. I think I've told this story before. Lee and I were out having dinner one night, I saw the field, y'all, that quick, but I saw it. I swear, something shifted. We were at Publico having dinner, and I looked up. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I stepped out of the world of fractal for a split. It was weird. I saw, I, you know, in, the, in um, Hunger Games, when Katniss shoots the dome, and she sees the dome. She sees that they're in this made-up world, I saw the dome, y'all. I looked up and I swear, my vision shifted and I saw, this is an illusion. I want to see it again. I've been in the field, y'all. It exists. And it's cool. And we can all go there because we're already there. <laughs> and it begins with what you are projecting in this world. What are you projecting? What are you projecting that prevents you from seeing the fields of gold that we are all walking in right now? When anger was my main emotion, and anger is a form of fear after all, all I projected in the world was anger, and it was mirrored back to me. Met lots of angry people. People trying to run me off the road, road rage incidents. Woohoo! That was fun. <laughs> now, though, as I seek to project only love, and I do it imperfectly, so I know seek only to project love, then I am on the receiving end of a whole lot of love. Not just from friends and families, but strangers. Strangers treat me great when I go in and I'm, I go into a store and I'm just like, I'm here. It's like Keith says, everybody loves me. <laughs> but they do, it's amazing. You walk in with love, people respond with love. It's amazing. I invite you. I invite you to consider which kaleidoscope are you looking through today? Is it one of anger or guilt or fear or despair, anxiety, suffering? If so, I invite you, swap your kaleidoscope. Look through one where you can focus on love, peace, 
joy, compassion. You may be swapping one illusion for another, one private Idaho just for another one, but this is how we raise ourselves to that higher perception so we can create the happy dream that leads us to fully awaken in that field of golden unity and peace. And when we do finally awaken to the unity, the vast, vast unity that lives in, through, and as us, and we look around and see that everybody's there. You're all here. We're all one. And when we can see that, the only thing we'll know to say is, oh, yeah. Thank you for joining us for Weekly Wisdom from Jubilee Circle. If you enjoyed the program, we hope that you'll support us by leaving a good review of this podcast wherever you download your shows. We also hope you'll support us in other ways, either by becoming a subscriber to our YouTube channel and our weekly newsletter, or by supporting us financially. You can find out how to do all of that by visiting our website at jubileecircle.com. Many thanks to Audio Coffee from Pixabay for supplying our podcast music. Join us again next week, and until then, take the words of Meister Eckhart with you. If the only prayer you ever say is thank you, that will be enough. We thank you for your time and wish you the kind of week that will leave you saying, Oh, yeah.